Try not to worry. It'll all work out. I promise. Tad, what is it? Tad? Did you remember something? We... You and I, uh... We're more than friends. Yes, we were more. How much more? Good friends. Close friends. Very close. I wanted you to remember that on your own. I just did. Um, this, this closeness, did it, uh, did it happen once upon a time? Like in a fairy tale? No, like once. You know, a little too much nog at the Christmas party? Something like that, or was there more to it? There was more. I see. I'm sorry. I know this is hard for you. Why shouldn't it be? I mean, even with my memory, it's still... Well, it doesn't take a genius to put the pieces back into the puzzle. Don't try to force them into, into place. And... My marriage ended because I had an affair. That affair was with you, wasn't it? Aren't these yummy? Mm. Daddy doesn't give me chicken fingers when I'm at his house. He doesn't. Daddy probably doesn't know they exist. You know, Mommy didn't know they existed for a long time either. But then, uh, then a very special person introduced her to them. And now she only shares them with very special people like you. Mm. Mm. I'll get the one door. Save me one of those. Mm, should I trust you? Yeah. <laughs> Why, Stuart? Adam, Adam called a while ago and wanted to speak to Adam Jr. Yeah. Guy, was he at ESP? Well, you know Adam. He's always showing up where he's least suspected. Did you come up with a cover story? Yeah, well, Haley told him that we were at the movies. Uh, not, not you and me, I mean, me and Jr. Gotcha. Uh, did he believe her? Well, he, he, uh, yeah, he seemed to, but he wouldn't hang up until he got a promise that Adam Jr. would call him back later. And I think we have a problem. I told you there were a number of reasons why your marriage ended. We were just one of them. That's supposed to make me feel better? You received d divorce papers from Dixie. Well, go through, you can lead to that. You were not supposed to receive those papers. What do you mean? Somebody in Dixie's family sent them to you. The in-laws you told me about. Dixie had decided she didn't want you to see those papers. Her family didn't understand that. So, instead of going to my wife and asking her if there was a mistake... There was not any I reason for you to believe there was a mistake. I took that as license to indulge in the obvious pleasure of going to bed with you. You were miserable, Tad. You were lonely. Like now. This is so odd. Telling you all this like you were a stranger. That about sums it up, doesn't it? You're a very attractive woman. Were we in love? You were totally honest with me. You couldn't tell me that you loved me. You never promised me anything. Sounds like I was a real hell of a guy. No, you were in love with Dixie. And I was happy with what we had. Is that why you're unhappy now? Do I look sad? A tad. Sorry. It doesn't have anything to do with you, all right? I don't have any regrets. You gave me something very special. Something that nobody can ever take away from me. What was that? This is crazy. Junior can't call Adam back. It would blow everything. Yeah, well, I've been, I've been thinking about that. And I think there's a way we can avoid that. Right. You cover with Adam. No, that's not what I was thinking. 
Well, come on, Stuart, you can do it. You tell Adam that, that Junior came home really cranky, and he was so wired you sent him straight up to bed. Adam's not going to believe that. He just, he'll just get suspicious and come home early and spoil all of Junior and Dixie's fun. Stuart? Is that you? Yeah. Hi. Hi, hey, buddy. Hi. Come here. Come here. Oh, Watch out for the kids. Oh, Junior, how you doing? Ah. Good. Uh, hey, uh, Stuart. What is it? No, is there any problem? No, no, no. Everything's fine. Everything's just fine. You know, Adam, I had this really neat idea. I thought, I was thinking, that wouldn't it be fun to play a funny trick on your dad? What kind of trick, Stuart? Um, well, your dad called tonight from Chicago. When? Ah, uh, just a little while ago. And he wanted you to call him back. So, I was thinking, wouldn't it be funny? Wouldn't it be great if instead of telling him where you really are, <laughs> we told him that you were someplace else, someplace really weird, someplace like maybe a land country safari in Africa, or maybe on a spaceship going to the moon, or or on the, in the North Pole with polar bears. Cool! <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, real cold up there. And we could be all warm in our little snow house, and we could be eating whale blubber. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> wouldn't you? I've always wanted a peanut butter and whale blubber sandwich. How about you? <laughs> Adam Chandler. Hello, Adam. It's Stuart. Stuart. What can I do for you? Uh, everything, uh, anything wrong? Oh, no, nothing like that. Oh, uh, good. Because I'm awful busy right now. Adam Jr. wanted to, to, to talk to you for just a minute. He's, he has something he wants. Well, it's a surprise, okay? Uh, be sure to ask him where he's been. Okay, here he is. Hello, buddy. I called you earlier. Where have you been? To Alaska with Uncle Stewart. Alaska? Well, see some polar bears? Uh-huh. Well, I, I wish I could have been with you. I'll, I'll listen, I'll call you tomorrow and you can tell me all about it, all right? Listen. Listen, son. Um, something is, is going on here that I have to take care of. Can't wait one more moment. So uh, I, will, I will call you tomorrow, all right? Bye-bye. Uh, I love you. Bye. Good boy. We can never let your dad know we tricked him, okay? <laughs> that was really... A great idea. Thank you, Stuart. You really, really saved the day. Stuart is full of great ideas. Can we call Daddy and tell him I want to stay here? Can we call Daddy? That's a very good question. Well, we could, but it's a little late, and we're all tucked in. It's kind of nice, isn't it? You like sleeping in your own bed, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know what we'll do? We'll call Dad first thing in the morning, and we'll tell him, um, something. What will we tell him? We'll tell him I want to stay here. <laughs> I wish I could just do that. I wish I could just make it that simple, but it's not. It's, it's one thing for you to be here while your dad stays in Chicago, but it's a whole other thing to stay here, stay here. You know, it's, it's just very complicated. So do you know what we should do? I think we should just concentrate on closing your eyes. Cuddle up with the dragon here. Ready? Got him in there? Dinosaur. Dinosaur. Well, fine. Fine as a dinosaur. <laughs> Ready? Sleep tight and don't let the... Uh, bed bug. Right. Right. Yeah. Finally right. <laughs> You're so cute. Uh, what do you want to do? You, should I, um... Should I sing? Can I sing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody sing to you at Daddy's? Uh, Haley. Does she? Is she a good singer? No, not at all. No? <laughs> well, okay. But she's a nice person, isn't she? You know? Yep. Yeah, we're lucky to have her. She's a good big sister. She'll take care of you while you're at dance. All right, now, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Comfy? Yeah. You are my sunshine, 
my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine. When I said you gave me something very special, I meant... Look, I don't think that we should be talking about this right now. It's not the reason why I came. You and Dixie are what's Interesting important. Interesting experience. Having somebody you don't even know dole out your most intimate secrets at their own discretion. Can't say I like it very much. I knew that I would have trouble telling you all this. Well, you're not having any trouble deciding what to leave out. Excuse me? Your first rendition of my life with Dixie didn't include the chapter on uh, our little tryst. Well, you remembered that. It wasn't exactly something that I could blurt out. If I didn't remember? I would have told you eventually. Is it a guilty conscience? Is that why you're here? Is that why you made the trip? All right, all right. I know I am not doing this very well. No, you're not. I'm just trying to think of everything that you've been through, and I am trying to tell you as gently as possible. Maybe you shouldn't concern yourself with being gentle. Maybe you should concern yourself with the... You don't owe me any explanation. Yes, I, I think I do owe you an no, explanation. No, no, no. I'm... I'm happy for you and Dixie, because you've been given a second chance. And I know how important that is to you. You're not going to let me talk, are you? Ted, I know better than anybody else how hard you've tried to get over Dixie, and I would be blind not to see that you were not succeeding. That doesn't mean that what we had wasn't real. I know that. What we had is very special, and... I don't regret it. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't give a minute of it. Not for anything. I've never met anybody like you before. I'm not so special. You know, you never made me any promises. I went into this knowing that it was moment to moment and I, I took the moments that I could, and it was wonderful. We didn't break up. You just let me go. There were never any promises made. We just took what we could from moment to moment. And when it was time to split up, that's what we did. You didn't even try? There wasn't any reason. On. I knew that you and Dixie were meant for each other. I see. Well, I'm sorry. I, uh, I realize it's, it takes a lot of courage to do what you've done, and I had no reason to snap at you. You're entitled? No, no. I know this has got to be difficult for you. I mean, I'm sure you don't have a lot of experience in things like this. So, why don't we just forge on? This time, don't concern yourself with pulling any punches. I'm sure that it, whatever the truth is, I can deal with it. After we decided to split up, Went back to Dixie. That's right. Things right. Out. You were telling me that we were going to get remarried. And that was when Billy Clyde came into the picture. The bridge. The explosion. How long? Before the ceremony, I mean, did uh, it happen? It happened on the day that you were supposed to get married. Dixie was still in your wedding dress she was certain that you would get back. That you would call on your friends, that you would tell them to come to the church again, and then she got a call. And they told her that you had died. Oh, 
flying now. Oh, look out for enemy below. Do you see any air pirates? Oh. Uh, here's those files you wanted, Mr. Gray. Oh, my God, the enemy at 6 o'clock. Come on, Jamie. Get that. Grab that. Thank you very much. You got it. Ah, thanks, Johnny. Good job, buddy. Good job. Good, yeah. You think there's treasure in here? What do you think? Well, yeah, huh? here to pick up Jimmy. Oh. Well, time to go, Brady. It's been good seeing you. Okay, there you are. come on. <sighs> How'd your article come along? Oh, I finally put it to bed. Exhausting, but it's done. Okay, good. Well, listen, uh, thanks for, uh, you know, letting me. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, sweetheart, let's go find that there, shall we? Bye-bye. A uh, friend of mine, Ted Orsini, wants me to do some research uh, about Billy Clyde Tuggle. Oh, what a horrible subject. And, uh, well, it seems that he's uh, got amnesia, you know, and he can't remember anything since December 1990. And look at this, look at this. This is dated December 11th, 1990. This is him. Him. This is Ted Martin. No, it's Ted Orsini. Ted Orsini is Ted Martin. Jamie's father is alive. She grieved very hard. Really, we all thought that she would never recover. Do any of us ever really recover? In my experience, no. Not really. I was afraid of that. Look, this, this can wait. No, no, tell me more about Dixie. I mean, I know how I made it, but what about her? How'd she survive? How did... How did she make it? She survived because of family. Her family. Your family. They all love her. Then we were both lucky. She had the Martins, and I met Nola. Somebody who was kind, warm, willing to love me. I don't know if I'd made it if it weren't for her. I think that's what families do best. They sort of give you hope when you think your world is falling apart. Then what happened? I mean, I, I, I know that she loved me, but I wouldn't expect anybody to mourn forever. She tried to have a normal life for her son. So she found someone else? Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately? It wasn't very long after your disappearance, this, uh... This guy showed up. He said he had been a friend of yours. Dixie was living with your mother at the time. And they took him in because they wanted to believe him. They needed to be close to you. And eventually, he conned Dixie into marrying him. They married? It didn't last. He treated her badly. He only married her for her money. What's his name? Craig Lawson. Is he, is he still in Pine Valley? He's gone. How'd he do it? I mean, there must have uh, been a hook. How, how, how did he get his hooks into her in the first place? Dixie's uncle had hired private investigators. They looked all over the country for you. I hope he got his money back. They didn't do a very good job. Craig Lawson had actually met you at one time, and he was interviewed. That was it? He just took it from there? Dixie. We all believed him. And one way one, we just, we gave up hope that you were ever, that you were alive. And Dixie had to accept her death if she was going to go on with her life. So what? You've both been through so much. 
More than our fair share. Here I am, always dead, alone. No idea who I am or where I belong. What about Dixie? Something tells me she's not alone. Is she? downstairs. You gonna just sit here and watch him sleep? That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Come on, Dix. No. Brian, I'm not leaving. I want to memorize every line, every shadow. Last night I get to spend with Bella. When I called Adam, it's really like a wake-up call. We handled it, no problem. Yeah, we did today. But what about tomorrow? Junior's just a little boy. I can't expect him to keep lying to Adam about being here tonight. Well, well Haley and Stuart and, and Gloria will cover for us. He'll be all right. He wants to stay here. He told me that. Of course he wants to stay here. And he's going to tell Adam that? Listen, we only have to keep this secret through the hearing. He's going to find out. Adam always finds out. Not this time. And the judge will find out that I have defied the court order again. You know, just... maybe it won't happen that way. There's no other way that it can happen. Well, tell him what to say. Did you gonna lie? What? No, no. We call it a game, like this afternoon. No, no, he knows what a lie is. I won't be the person to teach him that. That's his father's job. Well, we will think of something. Anything that we think of, anything that we do, Adam is going to find out the truth that I have screwed up. I'll lose Junior forever. No, Dixie's not alone. She's with somebody. Somebody who's good for her? He's very good for her. His name is Brian Bodine. Then maybe it's best that she continue to think that I'm dead. After all she's been through, why should I go back if she's managed to find someone else? Brian is very sweet, but he's not the love of her life. How can you be so sure? He's 19 years old. He's basically still just a kid. Well, if they truly make each other happy, then that shouldn't matter, should it? Oh, it matters a lot, believe me. It matters to Adam Chandler. Brian is the main reason that he's pursuing this custody case. Do you really think he can win? Yes. And I think it's going to devastate Dixie, and I don't think Brian is going to be able to help her through this. I don't know. There's a lot to be said for you. Ryan is a wonderful person, and he helped Dixie last summer when she was having a terrible time. But you know what? They're like two lost souls clinging to each other. That's what lost souls do best. You know, if you came back, if you if came I back, I came back, I then Brian would just fade into the woodwork, and Dixie would come back to me. Is that what you think? How do you know that would happen? How can you be sure? You will be, too, if you just see her. So much has happened. Things have changed. I've changed. Your love hasn't changed. Hasn't it? It hasn't changed for Dixie. Look, Miss English, right now, I can barely remember this girl. And if I try real hard, I can sort of remember loving her once. But if I go back to Pine Valley, I have no idea how I'm going to feel. She needs you. Why should I face her if I can't be sure? You just have to believe that you will be sure. But I'm not. And if I do go back to Pine Valley and you're wrong, 
All that'll do is cause her more misery. She's had enough already. So have I. Are you saying that you're not going to go back? Dixon needs a miracle right now. And you are the miracle. I am no miracle. You are, to her. I have an idea, based on fractured memories, that once upon a time we were in love. And we suffered through an unbelievably horrible tragedy. And that's pretty much how it was. Well, from what you've just told me, that love was anything but perfect. And the tragedy was brought on in large part to my own selfishness and stupid mistakes. You had some misunderstandings. Painful misunderstandings. Painful. And I've had enough of pain. So has she. You know, you're wrong to blame yourself. Maybe. Maybe. But under the circumstances, I think it's, it's best that... But I just live with my mistakes. Let her go on with her life and, and do the same with mine. You and Dixie are human. You made mistakes. Who doesn't? But you truly loved each other. And you can make it all right. Doesn't it seem like a love like that deserves a second chance? A lot's happened. It's still happening. That's why she needs you. What she needs is Tad Martin. Tad Martin is dead. Even me. I don't believe that. I... I feel like Ted Orsini now. If you would just come back with me. If you would just come back to and my ballot. And do what? Pick up the pieces of a... of some life that I barely even remember? You know what? All I've done is... is tell you about all the problems in your life. And what I haven't done is told you about all the people who love you and who want you back. Would you do it? Would you risk everything you have, everything you know, everything you are for the sake of love? It can't be. I saw him, Phoebe. The man in this picture is Ted Orsini. Only looks like the picture. Oh, gosh. It all makes sense now. I was talking to Brooke about Tuggle, and, and she got upset, and I figured it was because of the bad memories of this guy. More but... like nightmares. Of course, that must have been it. And then, then she started pumping me for information about Ted Orsini. How long has he had amnesia? Questions like that. Really? When was this? Last week? No. Last night. And then, all of a sudden, she takes off and leaves town, and you won't tell me where she is? Edmund, Ted Martin can't be alive. He's alive. It's impossible. It's a hoax. No. No, it's on the level. And Brooke knows it, too. That's where she is. Isn't she, Phoebe? She's with Tad right now. She's with Jamie's father, isn't she?